And how did you find the battery life then when you're buying the second hand car, Paul? The first one I bought. Yeah. Yeah, or it was grand. Of them, really. the like as I said, mean. look, it was the first generation. It was never going to save the world, or you're never going to get a week out of it. Yeah. But it was kind of. Yeah, look, it suited our needs. That's what we wanted. And then when we looked at the second one, like we didn't go for a roots model or we didn't go for a new car because we felt like the longest range we wanted was going down to Waterford. Yeah. And as soon as we did that, that's grand. That that's, was your the parameters of what you needed. It was in winter, you know, when the batteries possibly aren't as efficient yeah. as they are. Yeah. You've loaded two kids in the back of the missus and, you know, that was it. So that was kind of our... So I think people really get caught up in this range. I'm not buying one till I get 700 kilometers <laughs> and it's just like this and it'll yeah, never change and yeah, blah, blah, blah. The, the one days they might spin to Dublin and do the shopping or whatever it might yeah. be. I mean, I did a, now a back of the envelope calculation when I was doing it. Yeah, when okay, I was changing the from, did I did, had the <laughs> spreadsheets out by it. And uh, we reckoned between insurance, tax, maintenance, cost of fuel and all the rest that we saved around 11,000 in the Whoa. time that wow. we had the first car to the wow. next car. And we won't get that much of a saving in this one, but that's you just, never yeah, know. That's phenomenal. You like, never know. And that was, in there, like. that was seven years of driving, wow. you know. So we held on to it. It's not as if we bought it for, you know, two years and yeah. got rid of it. Seven years. So it lasted seven years. So again, the thoughts of you buying a mobile phone second hand. Yeah. I think I and expecting it to last seven years, yeah. And would you ever think then of ever switching back? No. I'm never switching back. No. no. I can't see any grounds on which I'd switch back. Oh, that's great. That's a good reinforcement for the EV there <laughs> straight away, really, isn't it? I think the lack of consistency between different locations can be a bit of a challenge. That in certain places you can park for free while you're charging, in certain places you don't. That, yeah, that yeah. when you're traveling, that can make things a little bit. Yeah. What's the rule here? Am I going to have to change what I'm doing? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you see some stories of people, certain chargers are occupied regularly by the same people who are using them because they don't have home chargers. Yeah. So I think local behaviour patterns as well as national policies can have an impact on what works and what doesn't or what your experience can be. Do you use um, the toll much? Oh, Bruce? I love it. <laughs> 50p, okay. <laughs> Is that, and what, I, like I suppose I don't use the toll that much. I think off peak on the M50 is 50 cent wow. right and it goes up to like 90 cent and i also use the m1 so i think it's a euro for the m1 mm -hmm. and yeah. then for the port tunnel it drops down to 150. but you have to register is it it's not you just have automatic to, you have to have a tag yeah. it doesn't just happen like, does no it? it's on your it's on your tag as long as you register your car tag your e-tag yeah easy trip or whatever one you have Like a day trip to the office for me on occasion that on the rare occasion that I would be in head office, it's 30 euro in tolls. Wow. Eat, you know, for a day. Yeah, so every time I go into Dublin effectively, I get another direct debit from my account to top up my easy trip account. Yeah. So now I'm saving about four euro um, compared to so probably 26 euro because the, I'm going peak through the tunnel. So the tunnel yeah. is still 10 euro. They don't give you any discount then. Okay. Um, but for other travel, you don't even notice it. So, like if I was going across to family or whatever, I would have paid, I think nine euro in tolls previously, and now I think it's two euro. Jeez, this big drop there. That's a big difference. So you don't even notice it. It's it's almost a non-starter. And I think that thing about charging in cities, it's fine when we live near a city that we don't rely on that charging. Yeah. But when you're visiting somewhere, I think the destination charging is critical. <laughs> And my view is we don't all need to have full charges. We just need external sockets and locations that you can plug in overnight. Yeah. So talk about kind of the, the savings and the tolls. What other, is there any other savings or supports financially out there for people buying new cars, used cars? 
Um, well, you, you have the grant for the getting the charger at home and I think that's been extended now you don't even need to have an EV so if you have somebody who visits with an EV or you're a B&B &B yeah. or something like that you can get the grant to get the charger at home as well which will further increase the options for people charging as they travel around definitely that's what you can get 600 euro isn't it yeah I think that one is and, and then how much on top of it then is like well, what's the total cost of the I think charge, it covered right? about I think it was about a thousand euro. It depends on how much cabling you have to do and how far away your setup is from your um fuse board. Um I know when I bought my car they put in a they got a card with free units on it for charging on one of the networks. Okay, all right. And I've only used about thirty percent of that so far. Um That's great. You still, yeah. have, you still have a good chunk. I have a good chunk left. left to go. So and that that's great too because it's a it's an expensive charger, but I, and it's a high capacity one. So whenever I stop, yeah. it's free automatically. And did they have to do much work to your house then, Roots? I actually had to get a whole driveway installed, Paul. My house is built in the 1930s, so it, it didn't have a car in, in its intentions when it was being designed. Wow. Um, so yeah, and it was quite a slant. So we had to take out quite a bit to make space for the car. But even with the charger, did you have to spend much to get that in on top no, of the garden? No, I got the work done alongside it. So I got some lights put into the garden and I got the electrician to run the cable at the time. And I got the next cable size up installed in case we have increased capacity yeah, in the future. So good. it's sized for the higher capacity if that becomes an option in the future. Yeah. Just a bit of future proofing. But it's that, that kind of thing. If you're, if you're doing work on a patio at the front or you're putting something down, running a bit of conduit to allow a cable run in the future to where you want to charge the car, great. Yeah. Um, it's not an option for everybody, but while you're doing it, it's certainly the cheapest time to do it. Yeah. You're saying it costs you about a thousand euro, was it? About a thousand euro, yeah. And then, was that euro, after the grant? Or? No, well, there was a bit of a discount from this from the company as well. Yeah. Um, so from not counting the groundworks, um, it was about a thousand euro, and then I got 600 back. Oh, very good. Yeah. It's not too bad at all. No, no. It was in parts as well, so kind of broke yeah. it up a little bit. And that grant will do for new and used cars, won't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. So even if you're even if you're importing as well, you don't. Yeah. As long as it's registered to you, as far as I know, you can get it. And then you, well, you can get a five thousand euro grant for the against the price of a new EV as well. I think yeah, and I think a little problem I've seen is friends who've been having a discussion like, well, that car is thirty thousand and there's five thousand, and like, no, yes, that's already built absolutely. into that price. So. Yeah. There's an yeah. the, the, it's a little bit misleading or yeah. people are double yeah. discounting the grant. It's not quite consistent across all the dealerships that are out there. Yeah, I just find for anyone who has a business car, the fact that there's no be benefit in kind. I mean, benefit in kind is such a cost on somebody that has a company car. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. And to, it's, it's nearly like getting a, a you know, bump in the pay packet every month now that you don't pay it if you're fully electric. Mm -hmm. But that's only for cars worth up to 50,000 euro. Oh, it's 50,000 the cap 50, there? 50,000 is the oh, cap, okay. and then you start paying it afterwards. Okay, so that, that cuts out some of the longer range cars that people might use if yeah. they were sales and that kind but of thing. But then you're only still only paying a fraction because you're getting the first 50,000 at a price, essentially 0% BIK, which is phenomenal. Oh, like. so they pro rata the difference? Yeah. Okay, it's not all or nothing? No, oh, no, okay. no. You, it's whatever's over that 50,000 euro you pay your BIK on then oh, from okay. there. A lot of savings to be made. Oh, absolutely. And I know we, in conversation, people often say, well, you don't ask how much your other car is going to pay you back, but you expect an electric car to pay you back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good way. I've never heard it put like that now. Yeah. That's a great way of looking at it.